you know that I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me and I want to be ready when Jesus comes you better sign me up for the Christian you you better write my name on the road and I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me and I want to be ready when Jesus comes. Amen, brothers. Amen. Amen, brothers. There's something else. I wanted to just do something if y'all don't mind. I, I wrote something out last night uh, getting ready at Spencer. Uh, we do this. We have this spoken word night and, and poetry and stuff. And then I get these challenges. Uh, from some of our young men, uh, uh, man, you can't put words together. Usually, and so I did that. I did a little freestyle thing for them, yeah, 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 and, and all that. Let them know y'all, y'all can't touch this. But, <laughs> but we do that. And I was getting prepared. I wanted to read something out that I think is. I, I, it may not even be relevant, but uh, uh, a little snatching and borrowing here. But I'm gonna tell the youth when I get back. Legendary. Every time I touch the mic, saying words freestyle like I'm a southpaw with no southern draw. Not only will I strike, I call. Well done, opposite of raw. Burn it if you have to. Be prepared to chew. The holy, the holy word will do. Style, substance, spirit, respect. God fear it. Last days you must hear it. Let me be that prophet, not for profit. Street spit, sanctified hit. Obey, the <laughs> Obey avoid the pit. Keep your light lit, don't sit. In the seat of the scornful, be mournful. Dark days, realign your ways. Don't even stand in the way of sinners. Making spiritual muscle thinner. Lose your life for a sake, be a winner. Le legendary every time I touch the mic, saying words freestyle like, I don't think of rap, I think of he, him, him. Okay, him. Touch the hem of his garment, stains will dim. Sin left a crimson stain, but washed clean in him, now I can sing a hymn. Rhythmically, spiritually, don't judge me. I'm praise police free. Stop spying out my liberty. Stand fast and be free, never entangled in yoke's bondage. The only way to duplicate me is when my son spits. Don't have a son, so my daughter hits. <laughs> a little word there. Legendary every time I touch the mic, saying freestyle words like, Lord, can you please shine that light on me, your other son? Sometimes I feel like you haven't answered one. I'm down on my knees, Father, please. All I go through is pain and will ever cease. What's up, y'all? This is the law preaching the gospel on the MEC in order to draw. Notes on an iPad, four fingers swiping with my paw. Writing words on the screen, but spitting through the mic with my jaw. Legendary every time I touch the mic. Saying words freestyle like, Lord, can you please shine that light on your son? On me, the other one. Sometimes it feels like you haven't answered one. I'm down on my knees. My high water pants don't fit. I borrowed this. Afro growing all wild, no pick. Saw a Jewish man, he saw me and spit. Bad, bad attitude, hell in a handbasket. Do you pop pills, drink booze, and chase money figures? Sagging your pants and calling each other niggers? Playing with bigger figures but no triggers. Legendary. Every time you touch the mic, saying words freestyle like, I'm a tyrannical lyrical taskmaster. Sand phrase is similar to the Blastmaster. <laughs> KRS minor, the Buddha bless. Cess, stress, dro, can't touch me. Riding, riding dirty, no, no. Back to the lyrical Glock, off safety, Christian ride on stocks. Keep on mentioning it. Just keep on spinning it. Like juice and gin in it. Jackpot, I may be winning it. Wondering how an old man can rip it. You talk all that ish. You're really illiterate. So I'll keep on flowing with the hit. No paragraph break here. Pump your fists and don't forget to cheer. In closing, the Christian life is a bumpy ride. Obey the devil or you'll be euthanized. So realize, truth, soul, salvation, brother. And then grab the rudder. That's it. That's it. I just wanted to. <laughs> Woo! Why don't you look at this real quick?
just doing some advertising here, having some fun before I get to the nitty gritty, trying to open y'all up. Uh, it's a blessing uh, uh, to be ministering in Ethiopia and being with some of the brothers in this church. I didn't show this just for uh, stilty perfunctory. I showed this uh, because I'm leading into something, you know, we're men. We got to be careful uh, uh, of who we roll with. But before I go there, I want to get all this stuff out, all this, all my issues that I'm having out. And so I'm, I'm just slowly shy. Slice, am I okay, Tyson? I'm going to show this. Uh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. absent from the court, but present in the style. Let me, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Let me move on. Let me move on. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I had to do this. I had to do this. Uh, I wouldn't be keeping it real if I didn't do this. So, all right, y'all. Yeah, it's all love. It's all love. It's all love. It's all love. Let, 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 let's keep... <laughs> Let's keep this show on the road. Uh, uh, my brothers that travel with me from Ethiopia, i got to tell you all something. Do you all know this, brother? The fruitful works of darkness is dangerous. Now, this is, brother, I'm going to put all these brothers on blast. Uh, uh, this brother, William Weaver, you all know him? We were in South Africa together. I'm on the way, and we are men together. Be careful who you hang out with. Uh, they were uh, in South Africa. We went to the shanty towns to visit after our mission trip. And all of us as men and, 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 and brothers are hanging together. Here in the shanty towns, they make their own beer. Amen. And so we have uh, men of God. See, men of God, if we're really going to be in power, you don't want to do this. And the power of influence, there's the student that I took to Africa with us, Branson Hartshorn. And then now, after William Weaver, bad example. Old brother, who knows Brother Weaver? Wave your hand. Amen. 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 This is beer. Amen. He's drinking beer. Don't do this. And then the power of influence. And now we keep going. Uh, influence will influence some people you wouldn't normally think about. This is Morris Pippins right here. Amen. That's Morris. He just sang the song. That's the brother that sang the song right there. That's Morris Pippins drinking the same beer. Uh, this is Brother Vincent Hawkins. You really can't see him, but I. Amen. Ministers of the Church of Christ. Members of the body of Christ. Amen. Get, mark them. Amen. 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 Be not drunk with wine to where it is accept, but be filled with the spirit. Amen. No drinking. No drinking. And then if we keep on moving on, it gets worse. Stacy Jones. Yeah. Wrong choices will lead to death. The Bible says the wages of sin is that, but the gift of God. Is eternal life through Jesus, through Jesus Christ. Then, my brothers, my brothers, as we keep going, I had to participate myself. I had to participate myself. Amen. And if you notice this brother real carefully, this South African brother, he's, it's his, he's next. You know, we passing it around. Yeah, y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. We just passing it around. Amen. Amen. And, and uh, so I had to participate in that. And I got a full tilt going on there. Just so, just want to let you know how we roll. Amen. 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 Just having a little fun. Have a little fun before we want to open y'all up, you know. And Brother Bowman is, is my man. That's my man. He's awesome. And appreciate his spirit and, and, and what God is doing to him and through him. But I had to expose a few brothers uh, before we move on. Amen, 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 and, and, and amen, amen. I got some other slides, so y'all, I've come out here to collect. You want to pay? I'll help you out. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, amen. God bless you, brothers, for just being here, uh, uh, and I couldn't wait to, to get to this part and was tremendously blessed uh, by what Brother Bowman shared. And uh, uh, we want to talk about this part of our session that uh, Brother Moore and the others have prepared for us, men in the trenches and unpacking the invisible knapsack. We've already heard the core uh, of the things we struggle with, and I want to do something different. I said last night, uh, 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 sometimes you have to have a good sense of humor with certain parts of the clientele that I deal with. Uh, in dealing with all different types of maladies. And what I want to kind of do is, what is this? Men uh, in the trenches and unpacking the invisible knapsack. In war, uh, the picture here kind of depicts 
the trench. And there, every brother in this room is in the trenches. Uh, it's no other, the, the reason why Ephesians 6 was written was for the military component of our journey in Christ. And we so much sleep on that, and, and, and Brother Bowman really brought out some of the major factors. I alluded to some of them last night uh, with regard to the things that we struggle with, and then how can we be empowered? I really want to see, and, and you know, the second part of this, when we take that short break and come back, we want to have a discussion. And one of the first things that I do uh, at Transforming Life Counseling Center, or the clinic uh, uh, that we have, is we create a safe place for men. And so when I'm talking like this, uh, uh, the APA would say, man, this is real unethical because you can't really open up. And a safe place in this room will not be created through this presentation. And uh, uh, we need a safe place. So what I wanted to do was just kind of go through this, and y'all work with me. Uh, we need to understand the trench. You got to understand your trench. Uh, 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 good, good. You need to understand this. You work with me. You got to look at a trench through the lens of geology. Y'all don't have to work with me on this. It's interesting. In geology, as you see, uh, trenches are dug usually by the erosion of rivers. Okay. And especially when they're long dry beds, you know, leaving uh, Los Angeles and being Oklahoma City, you, know, you see this almost in the raw. Uh, lake Heffner and Lake Arcadia and other lakes that dry after a while. And the geological movement and the shifts of the earth. I'm trying to open y'all up, brothers. If you're going to understand your trench, some of you have geological trenches that have been dug by the erosion of dry beds in your life. We won't be talking about that. You've got to look at I'm just opening you up to see this. You've got to look at your trench through the lens of construction, and, and we got an engineer in here. He's over there. But, but civil engineers got a lot of values and trenches, you know. And they need to see the infrastructure and the pipes underneath, and gas mains and water mains and fiber optic lines. And so uh, civil engineers will create what I have there, like a trench or a search slit so that they can examine underground and under, examine the pipes and examine the structures. As a matter of fact, some of you have them on their lawns. I have them uh, uh, on my property at some times. They'll put flags, red, green, or blue, for a uh, gas main, water line. And, and uh, I'm trying to tell you that some of us in here are in the geological trenches, and some are, are, are trenches to discover who they are. What pipes are rolling under you? It's, it's quite interesting when you do that because they do that for other reasons if you look at it in construction or civil engineers. But there are things that do flow through pipes. Maybe no wonder the writer said, let us lay aside all sin in a way that does so. Let us run with patient race set before us. But that's the, so then look at the lens of the military. Everybody that's one that's most acquainted in trenches sometimes have been dug for defense. I said everybody's in the trench. And a lot of brothers play defense. Uh, we, 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 sometimes we're at war with each other and the brother, there's a level of machoism and a level uh, 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 of the male ego that goes into defense. And I want you to see this. I know y'all are thinking about it, but, you know, in pre-firearm eras, some of you are saying, what is pre-firearm eras? It was a castle, so you can understand this, use your mind, is a castle with a moat around it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And then it was to really ward off people from just rolling up on your castle and saying, ding dong. Uh, 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 we do that different if you want to look at it modern day and get some depth into that thought. You know, gated communities kind of provide that. You don't want nobody rolling up on you. And I'm trying to open y'all up. Y'all looking at me like, what is he saying? You got to understand your trench. You're in one. And we're on the defense. You don't want to let folks know. Man, I cried. You know, I have uh, 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 six, six boys. And when we looked at Brian's song, John, <laughs> you know, Brian's song, maybe y'all don't remember Brian's song, you know. You know, man, I, 
You know, I was all down there, Kevin under the table. You know, we, we're a bunch of guys. We don't like to express our vulnerability. And so this is the stuff that operates in the, in the church. I ain't even where I need to be, but the, the military trench. Then if we look through the lens of archaeology, uh, sometimes you're going to have to go into your life and excavate some ruins. That's probably why you jacked up now. Uh, and you have to excavate those ruins. Well, I, why do you get angry so fast? Well, what, I mean, what's the reason? What is the reason? Why do you think everybody is after you? Why, why are there trust issues? And so a lot of times, men in the trenches, way before we get to the other thought, you need to understand what the trench is. I have had to identify, uh, I'm a, uh, a kaleidoscope of all of them, if, if you think about it, because there are times when I want to discover what I got. And so I'll take this analogy. Are y'all understanding me? Y'all feeling me on this? I'll take that. And, and, and why is this important? Because if you're in the trench and uh, 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 you're trying to uh, fight, sometimes it may not be military where you have to dig a defense. It just literally may need to be a different level of concern. You need to see what's there. Why do you always sound angry when your wife talks to you? told y'all this is men's empowerment and so our style of connecting and the way that we do things it's not enough to just title this uh men in the trenches unpacking the invisible knapsack the trench is intentional because we're all there uh uh, i'm privileged uh and you know uh, there in oklahoma there are several soldiers we have some purple heart soldiers and it's a military place tinker air force base is out there and, and one of my deacons and, and Brother Farrell, one of the shepherds, Brother Dukes, and, and those guys, uh, uh, they talk about the trenches. And Murray, when, we're, when we were in the trenches, he's talking World War I. Uh, Eugene Campbell, he passed uh, the third year I was in there. Uh, he was World War I, Brother Farrell, World War II, and they were in the trenches. And when they were in the trenches, Murray, man, you know, uh, let me let you know that in the trenches, we're there to, you know, be protected from the onslaught of soldiers, but while we're in the trenches, we're sharing our families. All you're doing is sitting there and waiting. The trench has been dug so that you can be on watch for your opponent. But while I'm in the trench with my brother, while I'm in the trench with my brother, I'm talking. We're looking for war, but man, I sure want to see my family. And I, you know, it's been a long time since I had some. Now uh, here in war, you know what, man? If we if we do it right, I heard they got some money in Saddam's castle. You know, and then the 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 conversation in the trench while on defense. That's all I'm trying to say. And so this is not up here. Uh, my remember, I, my daughters told me, Daddy, please don't be like you're in the classroom at school and you get real dry and boring. But, but, but I want you to see the trench because a lot of us are in the trenches. And the reason why I had that conversation with my other brother who's in the trench is because usually what we do, brothers, we identify that one brother in the church that we know we can talk to and we, we off the cuff. We cussing. Come on, come on. We cussing. Man, you know what you did, man. We do that. Hey, Amen. Why? We're in the trench. We're all fighting, and everybody's expected to be defensive. You got your weapon, and, and so, but then uh, the defense is, man, I don't want brother and girl to see me doing this, you know, and then, and, then, and then guess what? When we're in the trench, we look for someone else who's cool in the trench. Everybody's fighting. You got to relate to somebody, and, and, and then this is all about relationship, and I wanted to just open you up with this way before we begin that you got to understand the trench. A lot of times you do need to go in there. It's okay to be in the trench when I'm trying to dig for some stuff. And then what's interesting, if you, did, if you didn't see this, archaeologists build trenches. And their main purpose on the dig is whatever they find, they put it in chronological order. They only found the part of the bone, so we've got to keep digging because we've got to find the tibia. The fib- we've got to find the femur. So they keep on digging, and then they put it together. Because brothers are fragmented, man. You gotta do that digging to figure out where you are. 
you got to do it. you got to excavate men in the trenches. That's, that, that's what this is about. I, it's okay to be in the trenches. i got to excavate because if I really, I, I need to put some things together because it may affect my son. i got to put it in chronological order. Some things aren't in chron- chronological order. And we're in the trenches, and we're trying to answer and provide answers for the trench when we're looking at the wrong trench mechanism. You, you cannot be on an archaeological dig, but then in the military on defense. <laughs> Just think about that. Think about that. A lot of times we are ineffective. We, we make ourselves vulnerable. Our responses are reactionary, and we don't know that, man, maybe I'm in the trench. I need to process this out. I need to see if this is a, a, an effect by my own erosion. Did something happen? My dry river, my bed is dry. And so no wonder it's a road. No wonder I ain't got no power to pray. Lord. Think about your trench. Yeah, let, let, me, let, me, let me move on. I want you to see this. Well, let's look at the contents. Did I go too fast on this? No, I didn't. We are uh, unpacking the invisible knapsack. You're saying, where did this dude get this stuff from? Uh, I teach a course called Race, Class, Gender. Thank you. I teach a course called Race, Class, Gender. And uh, Peggy McIntosh, I told you, from Wesleyan College, talks about unpacking the invisible knapsack. Uh, she's a, a, a white woman, uh, and she has recognized her privilege. And so she says things like, I really don't have to worry about going to Walmart and being watched. And she writes down about 40 of them. And, it's not, and, and, and she's doing that for a reason, to be sensitive to stereotypes and things of that nature. She didn't know she had an invisible uh, knapsack, but when she unpacked it, she noticed that she had privileges that they don't have. So you don't necessarily have the luxury. For example, uh, uh, you and I don't have the luxury of relaxing when being pulled over. Amen. I don't say be the luxury of just saying, it's okay, it's just a minor infraction. Come on, officer. It's, it's, <laughs> it's more or less, if it's a minor infraction, I need to make sure my position is right. I need to make sure my eye contact is different. I make, need to make sure my moves aren't so deliberate. And the point that I'm making is, is Peggy McIntosh noticed that she, as a Caucasian person, had that. Now, that doesn't mean that we're disparaging to Caucasian persons. It just simply means that that's just in the real and raw. Well, brothers, there are visible knapsacks. Uh, I wanted to provide you what a knapsack was. Somebody says, I already know what it is, but I like to be thorough. If you unfolded this, it was, there were several items in the knapsack. While in the trenches that I showed you several slides over, those men had knapsacks uh, consisting of a blanket, consisting of the roll was their blanket, consisting of toothpaste, things like that. I have here, uh, uh, you have it all up here, shirts, socks, toothbrush, pocket knife, Bible, medication, drawer wipes, and tobacco, even a housewife, which is a sewing kit, kind of sewed up. And what they would do in the trenches, lay their sacks out, and take care of them. So they had to do it low. Now, the invisible knapsack is where we're going to take our turn and our departure because all of us have knapsacks and we got some stuff in it and it consists of this. Now, the first list uh, is up there intentionally, depression, bipolar, uh, illness, anxiety, disorders, psychotic disorders, OCD, and those types of things. If, if I'm dealing with this one here, uh, uh, and you may know a person like this, you know, uh, without, without blowing any confidentiality, you know, the drug of choice is lithium. Now, uh, I don't, I'm not going to even go get into it, but the, I'm, you, you'll stagger at how many are in here. And it's in the church. Up bipolar, up and down. So you, you, rapid cycling is what I would call it in some of my reports where they're just talking about it. You know the president? They're just real excited. The mania is up. And it goes down. And then it's hard for the person uh, uh, who lives with that person because they don't know what they're going to get. And uh, I have preacher friends who have wives that have this. It's an invisible knapsack because you don't unfold it in front of the church. I'm suggesting that there are knapsacks that we hold now that we're just not going to unfold. You're not going to even unfold it in this platform. But we want to talk 
about some of the dynamics because as we get beyond the list of clinical maladies, you get anger control, peculiar thinking, sensitivity to rejection, low self-esteem, insomnia, jealousy, and I put a comma blank because the list goes on and on and on and on. So we got a visible knapsack that you know about, an invisible knapsack. But in this workshop, uh, I just want us to understand uh, the context of fears. You all know the text. Remember, I'm trying my best not to preach, so I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But, but when you look at this, uh, it shows us the, the, the overlay of fear in the Word of God. A fear not, by the way, fear not is in there over 100 times, admonishing us to fear not and things of that nature. I put this here primarily because uh, on the basis of being in the trench and unpacking that knapsack, the fear is the invisible stuff is that's not what I want to uncover. So what you see in me and what I see in you right now, all of us are really perpetrating the fraud. We're perpetrating. This is nothing. It's, it's really booty right now. It's nothing. You know why? Because it's that big, I didn't bring the picture, uh, but it's an iceberg. Y'all know what an iceberg is. Uh, uh, the iceberg is, is uh, there's at least 50 feet of it exposed. The other 100 to 250 feet of the block of ice is underneath. Sigmund Freud would, would uh, make that analogous to the id, ego, and superego. And then the lower part is the one that we try to hide, uh, the unconscious self. And so for a matter, as a matter of fact, uh, some uh, little thing I do, uh, what's your birthday? When, when's your birthday? Okay, 11, 20, 80. You male or female? Where were you born? What kind of girls you like? There it is. Answer wasn't so fast. You get it? Now, the answer wasn't so fast because the questions I asked him, it's kind of like my, how my psychology classes roll when I do some stuff. Answer was not fast because everything that I asked you was the iceberg. What's your date of birth? Oh, yeah. And you just spit it on out. What kind of girls you like? You know what he just did? I ain't trying to put you on blast. You went uh, from the breasts all the way down to the toes. That's a little bit more elaborative. And the reason why you didn't want to go down and say, well, I don't like, is because it's submerged. You don't want no other brother saying, you know, that dude is kind of kinky up in there and in here. And you don't want that. And so what happens is, and so I just tried to demonstrate, if I ask questions, that, now, that, now y'all not going to even want to talk to me ever again. But, but, but I just asked that simple question. That's the simplest experiment I do all the time. And you just answer right off, and you should see the students get real. Well, I'm just answering questions. Yeah, I'm this, that, and the other. And then when I ask them, they have to dive in. It's representative of everybody in the church. Everybody saying amen ain't amen and for them. Sometimes you amen because you're afraid, so your amen chases the fear away. Isn't that wild? So, and so, a uh, brother get up there, and you know, and you talk about our lifestyle. Amen. But all along, you want him to kind of move on. I'm afraid of modifying my lifestyle. <laughs> so, the, the phobia, I put the letters up here. Some of you all like digging in the word. So, uh, uh, 5399 is the fear and terror and anxiety. And you'll get that example. Uh, uh, when the angels appeared, they were so afraid. It's the idea here of fear and terror anxiety. We have that. We have that. Uh, but fear will strengthen through relationship. Just can't, everybody knows Romans 8, 15. Uh, uh, God says, you know, fear is really not an option, but fear will be balanced when we learn him as Abba. If you can't call him Abba, you're going to always be afraid. You've got to say Daddy. And it's not just saying daddy, he has to be, it's daddy with expectation. Uh, daddy with expectation. And then, of course, the evaporation of fear uh, uh, can happen through these passage. Uh, which emotion can cast out fear, by the way? Y'all know this question? Perfect love. Yeah, amen. Good. Perfect love. Uh, what outlook uh, uh, does this then produce? It produces courage. Uh, I think over there in Acts. And, and then if you look at the other one, just, just trying to go through all this before we do some other stuff. 
Awe and reverence and honor is another fear. So in Acts 9, 31, uh, 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 they walked in the fear of God. They revered God. Most of us have that. Uh, uh, even through our mess and through our shame, we have that. If, uh, if you use another spirit, small s, this will intensify. You say, Bird, what are you talking about? <laughs> Has anybody ever been high in here before? Y'all weak. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's exactly what I thought. It's exactly what I thought. I never forget. I never forget at Manuel Arts High School. Y'all know where I went to school? I was under them bleachers. Are y'all interested in this? I was under them bleachers. And uh 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 uh-huh, uh-huh. Took a took something to the head. Heard music all through geometry class. <laughs> Man, hey, 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 I I don't have nothing to fear. That's, that's a beautiful release when I don't care what y'all think, man. It, 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 that's a beautiful release. And the fact of the matter is, tried to go home and, and talk to her back as she, you knew my father. Talk, talk to James D. Murray. Uh, uh, head wasn't clear, but trying to sound intellectual. And then some of the paranoia hit up, and, and man, fear and terror and dread. And up. And uh, uh, there's a such thing in the clinical arena as substance-induced anxiety. Uh, uh, and that is natural, just depending on the synthetics of things that, that a person uses. So I just wanted to use, uh, just show a true understanding of fear. Uh, uh, in a sense, when you talk about Ephesians 5.21, I don't want to ramble. I, I'm, I'm not topical. But, but when I look at this, uh, uh, this is one that we really got to work on in the church. I'm going to deal with probably some submitting to one another in the fear of God. Brothers really need to see this. We're in the trench. We're trying to unpack the knapsack. And we got to say, in the church, we're submitting to God as we submit to the leadership that God has designed. Okay, Brother Muse was an elder. Brother Robert Dukes was an elder. Uh, Brother Curl, you was there. You did that installation. And when Brother Muse passed, I had the arduous, I, I'm in it now, of developing leadership. Now, the fear is you know, in the church, man, I want to be a leader. Nothing wrong with that. If, if, if a man what? Desire. He desired what? A bishop must then be, y'all know the text, and, and, and it goes, well, there's nothing wrong with that, that, that. But when I read Titus, this is where I am. This is not done Overnight. It encompasses back to four where if we're equipped right and the equipment managers in the church give the right equipment to a person, they'll know how they're to function and the leadership... Of the, their level of leadership won't be jaundiced by what they want to do. It's submitting to one another in the fear of God. And the idea is the fear of God. God is holding Lawrence Murray accountable for the trajectory of the church at Spencer. Now, if that is the case, then I can't be afraid to operate in the calling that God has given me. That's, that's the whole pastoral message I know y'all know. Paul was telling Timothy, look, don't you be scared now, man. Only thing you owe them, folk, you just beat out an example to the believers in word and faith and in purity. I mean, you know, he's trying to let them know. He said, now keep on reminding them now. 
Matter of fact, reprove, rebuke. Is it, what is, why is all that there? Titus and Timothy were in churches that they did not establish. Blended situation in the church. And having to deal, and then in that context, I'm going through this because men deal with men. Fine, and Paul, man, Alexander, the coppersmith did me dirty, man. I'm, can I talk? I'm serious. Only Lucas with me. Have you ever been there? I've been in L.A. Look, y'all, we, I'm a homeboy. And... and I don't know one person who has not had, especially if you're a preacher or a leader, and only Luke is with me moment. <laughs> it's frightening. It, it, it's a friend. Now, 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 why are you spending so much time on this? We've got to understand our fear. I'm not going to get to these other questions here because I wanted to do this. Here's a challenge for, uh, to empowerment. Uh, there's a subculture of underachievement. There is a prison as a rite of passage. There's a lack of clear direction. Uh, 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 there's swagger over work. Uh, uh, there's uh, mystified by intergenerational hindrances. Unemployability I have. Academic mediocrity. I'm going to explain all this. Uh, uh, absent parenting and child support are the ones. That the next slide is even more revealing where we'll open up and maybe that break will come because these are challenges to empowerment, and I've decided, uh, along with our brothers at the church, that we don't want a subculture of underachievement. Y'all, and I'll be willing to take the weight. We can have questions and answers in the next session. I'm not, what, I don't care what the tough question is, but we cannot in the church as men and be empowered accept the underachievement of young men. If you are doing that, you are participating in their downfall and their folly, man. What do you mean? I, I'm not just coming up with this out of the dark. Older men teach the... That's Timothy. I'm just a pastoral epistle. And the idea is, I don't want a subculture of underachievement. And so I, we meet with the men, uh, so they won't think, man, Murray, Murray trying to be hard as nails. No, no, we meet with the men. Uh, uh, brother, we, we, we want to be okay to step to your son. We want, a, we want a village. We want family. And we want to make sure uh, that there's no underachievement. So you mind if we visit? We're going to be visiting your son's school. It, you, if you don't do that in the church, you don't have a ministry that's doing that. And you just sit. You got time to go to Audubon, John Muir. Robin. You got time. These boys go there. You just, just show up. Say, yo, man, what's happening? How you doing? It's lunchtime. It's brother so-and-so. And hey, oh, he... You will change the trajectory of that. Just show up. Show up. They see me show up at uh, Roscoe Dungy, middle, uh, uh, Roscoe Dungy and Star Spencer High School, and I come in there. And, you know, I, I'm not trying to be the preacher. I am the preacher. I am the preacher. It, it, it's not in a walk and not in a talk, not in a style. Uh, uh, but the calling has moved towards, look, I got to, as a man, what kind of preacher am I going to be if he don't see me come from behind the pulpit? And I'm on Sundays, I'm hooping sometime. Other day, man, I'm feeling good with teaching. But then that guy looking at me, say, oh, yeah, but, but then when they see Murray come through, he on school. And then when I come there and I'm not all that, I'm saying, man, what y'all listening to? And me and Ryan had this conversation today. Uh, rather than go all off, we were just talking about it this morning. You know, you know what? What's up with two chains? This is just a conversation. And what happens is the expectation of achievement is, okay, the, the shepherd's coming to the school. My, my minister, I was about to say pastor, y'all. Then we have another issue going on. I don't care what y'all, that's just what I do. Hey, what I do, hey, that's the hey, it's the testimony and not the title. And so, you know, we go there and just try to shepherd those young men. Try to shepherd those young men. You know, sit down. It don't take nothing to get a personal pan pizza. Roll up there and say, yo, man, let's sit on down and meet your friends. And then you're interested in the fact, why are you here? Remember, why are you here? Man, I just want to achieve. Who's your teacher? Huh? And uh, I said, well, now let me just go see the counselor. I'm so-and-so's uh, uh, preacher. Remember? Oh, I said, your radio program. Okay, yeah, all right. We, you don't have to da 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 Interest, not just a parent. Why am I saying this? It's a young man who we witness in the church who's in the slippery slope. Mama getting up, 
confessing every Sunday. Y'all see this every Sunday. All they need, uh, uh, like, my, my, like my good friend Arnelia said, all they need is for you to sprinkle some of the salt you got on them. Click some salt on them. And then you stop the subculture of underachievement. I understand the sagging and all that. You know, I try not to be, but, but at, in, at the congregation we want a standard. We want a standard. Uh, 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 we want people when they come, and we're trying to develop this out at that good country church. Uh, we want people when they come to feel that they can bring their families and then have some direction. How you do that? When we come, we tell them, that, um, if, you're here, if you're a man and you're here, if you're a man and you're here, you're responsible, and you just won't be sitting. You're responsible to participate in what we would call the flow. You're not in the flow of this church. Go somewhere else. I'm not saying that flippantly. What is the flow? Fellowship. You need to be in the flow of the You need to be in the leadership aspect. There's a level of ownership. You live work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You ain't flowing with us. Go, go to Brother Crenshaw. We, and I'm not saying that flippantly. We, we, it's, we, it's seven or eight African-American churches out there. And as a person who works in church relations and Christian Chronicle and all that, uh, uh, we, we spread the wealth everywhere else. But at the same time, men are expected to reach into another man. Amen. Amen. Now, all right, let's keep moving. Prison has a right of passion. We don't have a lot of time. Lack of clear direction, swagger, overwork. Find out why they're interested in what they're interested in. Lord Jesus, I keep going. Find out what they're interested in. Don't appreciate swagger over work. Okay? You might want to put on a little bow tie and all that kind of stuff. Swagger is nothing. Work is everything. Why are we saying this? You've got to empower young men. In our churches, they're not expected to succeed. Uh, and that is why you can't have men. You can't have men getting up reading script. I personally believe, brothers, that what they see, uh, uh, Dr. Albert Bandura calls that modeling. He calls that modeling. A little baby watches it hit the doll, and then it watches it for a little while, and then goes and models the behavior. Young men are watching us, and if our game is sharp. I was looking at, have y'all seen Duck Dynasty? Y'all know those are members of the Church of Christ. I know it is. White Fairy Road Church of Christ. Uh-huh. Uh, they're Church of Christ members. got a reality show, Duck Dynasty. They're Church of Christ members, elders and preachers, uh-huh. with long beards, and their wives are incredibly sexy, but they are <laughs> yeah, amen. Uh, I keep getting that. Well, but, but, but why am I saying that? They swagger, They're appealing. They, they deal with real issues, and now uh, uh, we're struggling on whether or not to have them on OC's campus because, uh, you know, some of the legalistic stuff. My point is, how are we going to empower people if we're telling them, well, you can't really be a singer in the church? We've got to deal with these issues. We've got to empower young men. What are you going to do? So it's been, we're challenging our young men. If you do not know what you're going to do or have any idea what you're going to do uh, by a sophomore in high school, you're going to have to see our team. They have to talk with you. Why y'all looking so strong? That's not bad. Why y'all doing that? The church ain't about that. I had a brother come, and you know, he was in the trench. He's in the train. He's just trying to stop digging the well. Man, this is just new, man. I need another child. Brother, what you mean new? I'm trying to make this brother. He needs to go to college. He needs to start now. He's, he's, he's My point is, we got to empower young men. We just sit back and let them. I mentioned Duck Dynasty because I saw the guy. He was out hunting, teaching his son. Some of y'all going to laugh at this. He had a crawfish. It was catching crawfish. He said, son, this is crawfish. Now, you see that dangling on that crawfish? This is some female crawfish. She got a vagina. You see that vagina? A little dangling right there. He's telling us, this boy, 13 years old. Then he paused to the camera. This is a reality show. Now, here in the country, this is how we teach the bird. We don't hide nothing. We show them. And he said, son, then you insert 
this right here, and this is how we catch crawfish. And, and, and they got, see that little penis on that crawfish? It go right into that vagina. But make sure you can get a woman that catch a crawfish. Don't worry about her face. If she put on makeup, all she's doing is hiding something. You make sure you get a woman. And then she said, why, 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 does your, why do you think your granny, uh, before I leave to go hunt for crawfish, why do you think your, my, uh, uh, your granny starts making the food before I leave? You know what that young boy said? Sir, because she has confidence in, the, in you? Yeah, she says, marry that kind of woman. He said, and he said this, it, she has so much confidence in me that when I go out, she's already preparing, knowing that I'm going to bring it in. But my point was, I was watching him teach this young man. We don't do that. Yeah, Aaron, I see you get, had him boy clothes. He watching everything. And he needs to be empowered. I got to move. I got to move. Can we, at right here, is where it may get a little sticky. So we'll read the list and take a break because there are important issues that dwell in the knapsack. This is a survey uh, that I administered. Yeah, kind of designed at the clinic where we work. We have to do these clinical reports, uh, and it's, it's really uh, arduous, but that's where I, I, I enjoy stuff like this. And we, it's, a, uh, dis, it's a survey that talks about the greatest problems of college students and men in general in a certain age. The number here, <laughs> uh, statistical, I think statistics are sexy now. Y'all didn't know that. This is kind of nerd stuff. But this is the, the <laughs> this is the, um, the number of people that responded and then the percentages of that number. If you see 13, it is a modified uh, number. It's really larger responses, but kind of give uh, a, 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 a better distribution so you can just see what it is. Uh, the greatest issues are sexual concerns and sexuality. Brothers don't stop getting horny. I'm just using that... The, uh, and the point of the matter is, if you ever read that passage in Galatians 5, uh, oh, it's a heavy passage. Galatians 5, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And then the list, you know the list, but I want to divide it to help you to see that this is serious. There, is, there are sensual sins. That's why lasciviousness and all that's first. Social sins and spiritual sins. You know, three S's to, re to remember it. And... and, and the sensual sins are the hardest to overcome for men. And they're fearful because they, it's very fearful. And I'm talking about, it's not the fear of the noun. It's the other fear of terror of knowing that, man, if I, I'm a wreck myself. So Romans shouts out at brothers and says, man, if you, if you keep feeding this, it's going to grow. Scripture bears on this. That is why uh, Israel fell. Men fell in one day over sex. And we want a way to talk about it. Let us take a break. Brother, Brother Moore said we want to break. Instead of doing the session like you see it, we're going to have about a five, I think, or ten minute break. Five minute break, he says. And then we'll come back, do a little bit, bit of this, and we're going to turn it out to you for some, some feedback and response, and we'll do some neat ways to do that. Let's take that break.